We humans need far more than our wits to survive. Like many organisms, we depend on complex processes such as osmoregulation. Osmoregulation is centered in the kidneys. It helps maintain homeostasis by carefully balancing the fluid and chemicals leaving the body. To study this and other processes, biologists use a general model of homeostasis. Stress, receptor, control center, effector, response, and finally feedback to complete a cycle. This model can be used to explore even very complex homeostasis mechanisms, like the regulation of skin temperature by the human body. Within our skin, receptors monitor exterior temperature. The cold receptors react to a drop in temperature. Nerve messages are sent from the skin to the hypothalamus. Within the brain, the hypothalamus is an important junction of nerve cells, and it influences many aspects of homeostasis. This control center can send messages to a variety of effectors, and so produce a variety of responses. The hypothalamus sends nerve messages back to the muscles of our skin to initiate one possible response. Birds and mammals, as well as humans, use skin muscle effectors. These muscles contract and cause hair to stand erect, trapping warm air. In humans with skimpy fur, we get goosebumps and little protection against the cold. Nevertheless, it suggests that once upon a time, our ancestors were covered with fur. The cycle which produces this response is a fairly simple homeostatic mechanism designed to conserve existing body heat. Another kind of response by the control center generates more heat. A message is sent to deeper skin muscles. These muscles expand and contract rhythmically in what we call shivering. This requires energy, and some of this energy is released to the body as heat. Much like the elevation of body hair, shivering is a relatively simple response, but one which generates heat rather than conserving it. Other responses can be more complicated. For example, the hypothalamus may send a message to the cerebrum. The cerebrum can be considered as a secondary control center. Conscious thoughts may be formed. The cerebrum directs complex arrays of secondary effectors. The final response might be stamping the feet. Or this more complex homeostatic process might end with putting on a sweater. Another kind of message from the hypothalamus control center demonstrates a further complication of homeostatic control cycles. Nerve impulses are sent to muscles which control the size of arterioles feeding blood to the skin. These effectors dilate the blood vessels, allowing more blood to flow to the skin and warm it. We notice this as the rosy cheeks of a child on a cold day. But the homeostasis of skin temperature is not of paramount importance to the survival of the organism. Maintaining blood temperature is more important. In the hypothalamus, the temperature of the blood is constantly monitored by receptors. The hypothalamus must balance the needs of two closely related homeostatic systems. 
Warming the skin with blood may eventually cool the blood unacceptably. At this point, the hypothalamus control center decides that blood temperature is more important. The hypothalamus sends counteracting messages to muscles which shrink the blood vessels. This cuts down blood flow to the skin, allowing it to cool below acceptable temperatures. To maintain homeostasis of blood temperature, the skin has been offered for sacrifice. Without protection, cells may eventually freeze and die, a condition we call frostbite. We can model the hypothalamus as a control center for skin temperature homeostasis. And also for closely related but separate blood temperature homeostasis. Another response by the hypothalamus control center demonstrates an even more complex cycle. Near the hypothalamus is the pituitary gland. The hypothalamus may send a releasing hormone messenger to the pituitary. In turn, the pituitary releases a hormone known as thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH, into the bloodstream. When the thyroid gland in the neck receives TSH, it releases another hormone, thyroxin, which is eventually pumped to every cell throughout the body. In response, each cell increases its metabolism. Our internal furnaces release more heat. This complex homeostatic cycle has receptors a sequence of linked control centers and effectors to generate more body heat. Feedback can come via an increase in blood temperature monitored in the hypothalamus, which stops the flow of releasing hormone, which shuts off the flow of TSH, which slows the flow of thyroxin. Another feedback mechanism is thyroxin itself. Thyroxin is monitored in the hypothalamus, where its presence shuts off the releasing hormone, thus ensuring only a temporary adjustment of the body thermostat. Feedback converts a single response into a constant cycle of adjustment. Positive feedback increases the next response. Positive feedback is produced when a microphone is brought close to a speaker. The swings of the cycle increase, leading to instability. In living organisms, positive feedback results in death. Negative feedback is the normal survival technique of the organism. Through negative feedback, large swings in the temperature of an organism are quickly damped down to a minimum. This produces the average steady state of homeostasis.